This is Common Core State Standard Support Video in Mathematics. This is for a high school standard, 9 through 12, NCN8. This standard states, extend polynomial identities to the complex numbers. Pretty short and simple. Uh, the focus is applying the polynomial identities, so let's look at those. One identity is a product of two binomials, and uh, these are pretty common. <laughs> uh, x plus a times x plus b would come out to be x squared plus a plus b, the sum of a and b, times x plus a b as our constant. Then x minus a times x minus b, uh, the signs are both negative. Uh, we get x squared minus a plus b in parentheses times x plus a b for our constant. And then we have the situations where the, bond, by the two binomials have uh, different signs. So we have x minus a times x plus b. Now in this scenario, if the absolute value of a is more than the absolute value of b, the result will be x squared minus the difference of the absolute value of a and b as our coefficient of x minus the product of a and b as our constant. And then in the scenario where the absolute value of a is less than b, then we will get x squared plus the difference of the absolute value of a and b times x minus a b. We also have our binomial squares. Uh, a plus b all squared will be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And we have a minus b all squared would be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Very common identity, the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared, would factor out to be a minus b times a plus b. Then we have our quadratic formula for use uh, in those cases where we have a uh, quadratic that does not factor. Uh, given the general case ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, uh, then our solutions for x would be uh, the opposite of b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And our second solution would be the opposite of b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Then we also have polynomial identities for cubes. If we have two cubes, uh, a cubed plus b cubed, that would factor out to be a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. And if we have the difference of two cubes, a cubed minus b cubed, that would be a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So let's take the first identity, product of two binomials. How does that relate to the complex numbers? Well, the closest parallel would be if we take the product of two complex numbers. So if we take uh, one complex number, a plus bi, with a being the real part and bi being, being the imaginary, uh, times a second complex number, c plus di. If we multiply those out, use our distributive property, uh, we notice that for the two middle terms, we have i as a common factor, so we factor that out. And then we can simplify the i squared to negative 1. Now we switch the order of our negative 1 to have just minus bd for our last term. And now we change the order around. Uh, use our commutative and our associative properties to put this in the uh, correct format for representing a complex number. So AC minus BD would be the real part of our complex number and parentheses BC plus AD close parentheses times I would be the imaginary component. Now notice the patterns for the product of two binomials, we always had the same first term in our two binomials. but in looking at the product of our two complex numbers, uh, our first two variables, and in this case for the complex numbers, it was the real parts, they're not the same. So we can't apply the, you know, the pattern of the product of the two binomials to the product of two complex numbers. Uh, the best we can do is that uh, the only thing they have in common is just that it's a general application of the distributed property in both cases. What about a binomial squared? Well, if we take uh, the complex numbers and uh, look at a complex number squared, if we start off with a plus bi is our complex number and square it, multiplied by itself. So we uh, use our distributed property, do our multiplication, combine our middle terms, change our i squared to negative 1, Sim do some simplification. So we have a squared plus 2abi minus b squared, and then we change the order around to fit the uh, representation for a complex number. 
So we get a squared minus b squared as our real part and 2abi as our imaginary. The complex numbers that we used initially was the sum of the real and the imaginary parts. If we were to take uh, complex numbers where it's the difference of the real and the imaginary parts and take that number and square it, we get a, a similar result, the difference being the sign of our middle term. If we look back at our real number situation with the binomial squared, uh, notice that we do have some similarities. We have the, the 2AB, the, the middle term for our binomial squared, uh, does turn out to be the coefficient for our i in both cases. And then when we put this in uh, complex number format, also notice that with our binomial squared, we had plus b squared, but with our complex number, because of changing the i squared to negative 1, we get minus b squared instead. If we were to take uh, some complex numbers and square them, Let's take this example here on the left, uh, 3 plus 2i times itself. If we take uh, this general pattern and apply it, well, we did it the long way, but let's see what would happen if we apply this. This says that I take the difference of the squares. So if I take, uh, let's see, our a and our b would be 3 and 2. So that would be uh, 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, 9 minus 4, it does turn out to be 5. And then uh, this says take the product of a and b and double it. So we take 3 times 2 is 6, double it, that is 12. So 12i would be our imaginary part, so that checked out. And then for our second example over here, if we take 4 minus 5i and uh, multiply it by itself, according to this, we take the difference of the squares. So that'd be 16 minus 25, that is a negative 9. And for our imaginary part, we take a times b, which would be 4 times 5 is 20 double it, 40, so it is minus 40i, so it checks out. So we, so we can apply uh, uh, the binomial squared identity uh, to the complex numbers to make our job a little bit easier. What about the difference of two squares? So apply to a complex number, if we multiply uh, a minus bi times a plus bi, uh, we would get uh, a squared minus abi plus abi minus b squared i squared, our two middle terms add up to be zero. Uh, then we can change our uh, i squared to negative one, which results in a squared plus b squared. Ah, so instead of having the difference of two squares, we have the sum of two squares for our complex number. So let's look at an example of applying the difference of two squares to complex numbers. We already saw what, what happens when we take a minus bi times a plus bi. We got a squared plus b squared. So if we take, for example, 2 minus 7i times 2 plus 7i, and we do all of the work, we end up with 4 plus 49, which will give us 53. But if we go directly from uh, what we get from the multiplication, a squared plus b squared, this says we could have just taken our a term, which in this case was 2 squared, we get 4, and our b term, which is a 7, uh, multiply that, that's 40, you know, square that, that's 49, and we could have gone directly straight to here. Let's take another situation uh, with the difference of two squares applied to complex numbers. Uh, let's say we have x squared plus 49 is equal to 0. Now, we can tell by looking that x squared, that's going to give us a positive number, and then we're going to add it to 49, so we know that there's no way that we can combine these two positive numbers to be 0, so we know our answer is going to be complex. So if we take uh, our pattern for the multiplication of uh, two complex numbers, a minus bi times a plus bi, we take our situation, x squared plus 49 is equal to 0, and directly apply our factoring. So uh, we can solve this then uh, separately. We know that this, one, this first one here would come out to be a positive 7i for our solution, and this one would come out to be minus 7i for our solution. Of course, an alternative would be to uh, solve it this way. Just take our original equation, subtract 49 from both sides. So x squared is equal to negative 49. Take the square root of both sides. And so we get uh, plus or minus the square root of negative 49, which of course will be plus or minus 7i. What about the quadratic formula applied to complex numbers? Let's put this in the general form where we're 
the way that we're used to seeing it with the plus and the minus here. Now we know that uh, the b squared minus 4ac part is called the discriminant and that's really the concern here. If the discriminant comes out to be positive, we're going to get two real roots. If the discriminant is zero, we're going to get one double root. And if the discriminant is negative, we're going to get two complex roots. So really this is our concern here, uh, our application to the complex numbers for the quadratic formula. That's going to be the situation if the discriminant is negative because we know we're going to get complex solutions. So let's take an example, 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. Apply our quadratic formula, substitute the numbers. Let's do the discriminant first. We end up with 4 minus 60, which is a negative 56. So we automatically know already that we're going to get uh, two complex roots. So we finish our computation, negative uh, 56. Uh, that factors out to a negative 4 times 14. Take out the square root of negative 4 as a 2i, plus or minus. Do a little bit of simplification, so there's our final solution. Let's look at cubes, the sum of two cubes and the difference of two cubes applied to complex numbers. Well, let's take a situation where we have, let's say, x cubed plus 64. Let's change that to x cubed plus 4 cubed so we can apply our identity. So we follow our pattern for our identities. So our x cubed plus 4 cubed would be x plus 4 times x squared minus the product of 4 and x plus 4 squared. Do a little bit of simplification and here's where we are. We have x plus 4, so we know that's going to be a real solution. Uh, but what about the x squared minus 4x plus 16? Well, typically with real numbers, we would just solve it this way. Just subtract 64 and the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. So that takes care of that. But we're going to have three solutions. So now we have to worry about the x squared minus 4x plus 16 is equal to 0 like we started to a while ago. So we need to be concerned about that. So what solutions will we get here? Well, let's take our x squared minus 4x plus 16 is equal to 0, apply our quadratic formula. Our concern initially is the discriminant. What type of solution will we get? So let's apply the discriminant here. Uh, substitute our values, 16 minus 64 and we get a negative 48. So automatically we know we're going to get uh, for our other two roots uh, a complex number. Okay, we get negative 48. So we have a negative for our discriminant. Uh, we have a negative square root. So we know since the discriminant is negative, we're going to get two complex solutions. Now with x cubed plus 64, we got one real solution and two complex ones. Now, is that going to be typical? Is that going to be the general case? So let's look and see if we can uh, figure that out. So let's look and do a little bit of investigation and see if that's a valid conclusion. We'd already figured out that this first part, the x plus b, that's going to give us our one real solution. So let's look at the, the trinomial here and see what happens with the discriminant uh, when we apply the quadratic formula. So we take our general form for the quadratic formula and let's just worry about the discriminant. We plug in our values for b, a, and c. Solve and we get b squared minus 4b squared which of course simplifies to minus 3b squared. Now we know that b squared is going to give us a positive number times a negative 3 will result in a negative number. So the discriminant will be negative, resulting in two complex solutions. If we take this a step further and consider uh, possible situations where for our x cubed we have a uh, constant that happens, that's also a uh, perfect cube, what happens there? Well, if we do the exact same thing, uh, take our uh, trinomial and apply that to our quadratic formula, but we're only going to worry about the discriminant, uh, we plug in our values for a, c, and b, and here they are. And so when we simplify, we get minus 3b squared d squared. And again, uh, we know that d squared and b squared are going to give us positive numbers times a negative 3. So again, the discriminant will be negative. So yes, we will get two complex solutions. Now that was the sum of two cubes. What about the difference of two cubes? Does that apply here too? 
So let's go straight to the general case where we have a perfect cube also for a coefficient for our x cubed term. Is it the same situation where we'll get one real root and two complex ones? Here's our concern again, the trinomial. And we're going to do exactly what we did before. We're going to apply this trinomial, use our quadratic formula. We're only worried about the discriminant. Substitute our values just like we did before. Solve. And again, we get minus 3b squared d squared. And again, we know that this is going to give us a negative number because b squared and d squared will give us positive numbers times a negative 3. Uh, so yes, the discriminant will be negative, uh, again resulting in two complex solutions. You might consider taking this a step further, but it really is beyond the scope of uh, this standard. Uh, but you can look at the general graph of the sum or difference of two cubes and you'll see that you'll always have uh, just one x-intercept when you set it equal to zero. So you will get just one real solution, uh, making the other two complex. So this standard, again, extend polynomial identities to the complex numbers. Uh, not as simple as it looked uh, because there's quite a few uh, scenarios with uh, the polynomial identities that we had to consider.